Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of a Blue Roan Spaniel in Soft Pastel. The full tutorial series will be released on my Patreon channel if you'd like to paint along with me and learn how to use Soft Pastel for pet portraits. But if you enjoy this speedy version here on YouTube, then please do subscribe to me here and check out some of my other videos here too. Bubbles the Spaniel was a particularly beautiful girl to work on. I begin on pastel mat and the size is 16 by 12 inches, so a nice big size for a head portrait. Although you can see here that as I quite often do, I'm including the background that's in the photo reference. It's some out of focus rocks in the distance and we've got the beach as the surroundings for this one. Now it doesn't matter to me that the top part of the picture ends up looking quite abstract. Sometimes with these out of focus backgrounds I really enjoy the slightly abstract quality that you get. But it still creates some kind of a setting for the animal. In this case we've got her beautiful windswept curls and I think just to give a little hint of the idea that she's at the beach in the wind is a nice addition to her portrait. So I didn't spend too long on the background. If you'd like to learn how I created that in real time that will be part of the tutorial series and the background took around half an hour to create so it was a pretty quick one. And then the whole point of that background is to set off the main subject. So I don't want the background to distract from the main subject, simply hopefully complement. And in this case, because the background is really quite light and out of focus, my hope was that all of the lovely, rich, darker colors within the dog would really pop out from the picture and set the dog apart from the background. So that's why I like to use backgrounds when I can. You can sometimes really enhance the overall effect of the main subject with a subtle background. So on the dog, I'm using a mixture of different pastel brands, uh, mostly my Unisons for a lot of the colors. I'm also using a few dark Terry Ludwigs and I'm using a black, a harder black pastel from New Pastel. You can find full materials list on my website. The link is in the description. And of course, if you're looking to follow along with the tutorial, I'll provide you with the exact color list that I'm using here so that you can either gather together the same colors as me or choose substitutions from your own collection of pastels. So it's not always vital to have the exact same colors as I am using. But I think that my patrons find it really helpful sometimes to see the exact color code that I'm using as then it makes it very easy for them to go and find something close within their own collection. So the face is quite large within the composition here. And sometimes I use pastel mat for the reason that I can get so much fine detail using this paper. But then sometimes I have a photo reference that has a slightly low resolution. And sometimes I actually love that effect within the photo because it stops me from going into each individual hair in terms of detail. In this case, you can see how little I'm picking up my pastel pencils. Most of the detail is done with the bigger sticks. And because of the scale of the piece, it's quite possible to get my marks small enough and fine enough using just the bigger sticks. 
So I do pick up some pastel pencils here and there, especially towards the end and especially around the outer edges of different parts of the dog. But this is a great piece if you're looking to expand your knowledge on using the bigger sticks. I hope that this tutorial will show you how versatile the sticks are and just how far you can go before you have to pick up some pastel pencil. And of course it often depends on the level of detail that you need to create within the fur and of course the scale of your painting. So the smaller you work in soft pastel, the trickier it becomes to create all the details with your soft sticks. So in this case, there are a lot of curls and a lovely windswept look to them as we come down the ears. I start to block in the first ear, but I also need to block in what's behind the ears before I can really finish them. So in this case, on this side of the dog, we can see part of the body and coming down to the chest area. So even within the image of the dog itself, I'm kind of working from background to foreground. So if a certain part of the dog is sitting behind the ear, then I need to work on that first before I can create all the nice flyaway edges of the ears. But I can get the main part of the ear blocked in to a certain extent. Now this will be different for every artist as all of us work differently. So when I'm showing you what I do in a tutorial, it's not to say that you can't do it completely differently and still end up with a wonderful outcome. But I'm really just demonstrating the, the order that I do things in and why it makes sense for me to do it this way. And maybe some of those ideas can be helpful to you if you're just learning. So although my aim is to end up with a very detailed and realistic looking picture of Bubbles the Spaniel, I don't necessarily have to paint every hair to get there. In this piece I'm using quite broad marks just really focusing on trying to capture the movement of the hair And of course, I am picking up some pastel pencil for certain areas. You could see me use some there around the sharper edges of the collar, for example. And on this ear, you can see how I'm blocking in the darker colours, going from the darkest black that I have, right up through deep navy blues, deep purples and then into the mid-tone area, slightly lighter blue-violet colours. One of my favourites from Unison is Grey 8 and you can see it in use. A lovely cool mid-tone colour. And then right up to some very pale light tints with a slight tint of lilac in them. So lots of purple in this piece, lots of blue violets and purples. But also bringing in little bits of dark browns here and there as well, as there is some warmth to the curls, especially when you look at the photo reference. So this is something that I talk about in all of my tutorials, why I'm choosing certain colours what's making me pick up a purple rather than a brown. It's something that I talk about a lot in my tutorials and hopefully throughout those tutorials you get a sense of how I think about colour and how it impacts my work because 
several years ago, while I was just becoming a professional artist, I really didn't have a good grasp on how to use colour. And it was definitely something that I worked on a lot in the beginning. So it's really one of the key elements to painting in soft pastel. And just learning a little bit about colour theory is such a useful thing. If you haven't already, I have a full series of videos here on YouTube all about colour theory and not just telling you the general rules, but giving you lots of examples and showing you how to actually apply colour theory in your work. Because although I knew about colour theory and I knew what it was, I still didn't for a long time understand how to apply that within my painting. So this is something I focus on a lot in my videos, as I know how much it helped my work. So the end is in sight at this point. This was a very nice piece to work on and I've just been chipping away at it over the last couple of weeks. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing the speedy version in time lapse here on YouTube. As I mentioned at the start, full tutorial series coming from this on my Patreon channel. And if there's a different breed or a different type of animal that you're interested in painting, then do check out my tutorials library on my website emmacolbertart.com as you might find that breed of dog or something similar to help you in what you're painting. But thanks very much for watching this here. Please do hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this. And until next time, happy pastling.